I want to go right into the nitty gritty here of what you do, which is you get a million dollar grant from the good people at Tito's Vodka, pull it together with a bunch of other uh, 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 other donations, get a guy from India to come in as well. And you take Baker's yeast, which is used in the hepatitis vaccine to come up with traditional medicine vaccine. How is that process going of using truly traditional vaccine development to get a, a cure for this terrible pandemic? Well, thanks for that question, Tom. There's a lot to unpack there. First of all, um, if you order a vodka drink, you definitely want to uh, specify Tito's vodka. Uh, but beyond that, uh, what we did was we signed a licensing agreement between Baylor College of Medicine and this amazing uh, vaccine producer called Biological E. It's not a household term in the U.S. and Europe, at least yet, but they're one of the big producers, and they're working to scale up one billion doses of the vaccine that we developed early on at Texas Children's and Baylor College of Medicine. So that's really exciting for us. We've we've never made a billion of anything before, and uh, and it's not quite baker's yeast. It's a you can use baker's yeast for some vaccines, but for this one, it's a <clears throat> different type of uh, yeast called Picia. And uh, we're scaling up production. And the hope right. is that it could be just like the hepatitis B vaccine, which you can make for a dollar, two dollars a dose, and you can make it all over the world. It's made in Brazil. The hepatitis B vaccine is made in Brazil and Cuba and India and Indonesia. Right. So the hope is that this will become the first low cost global health vaccine. How do you respond to the different sciences here of modern vaccine virology? The ones that are complex, the ones that are new, the ones that are improving as you take a more traditional route. Well, I, I kind of like the innovation, and I like the mixture of the innovation and the traditional, especially if you're trying to work quickly uh, and trying to get a vaccine out as fast as you can by trying different technologies, because you don't know what's going to wind up working best in people in terms of inducing a protective immune response and protection and safety. So by trying the different technologies, you get multiple shots on goal and it increases your likelihood of success. So it spans the gamut from really cutting edge, unproven technologies like the mRNA vaccine or the DNA vaccine approach or adenovirus to sort of old school stuff that we're doing, like a recombinant protein and yeast or inactivated virus vaccines. And the hope is that we'll get multiple vaccines that both work and are safe. And because if you want to vaccinate the world, we've got to move quickly. Dr. Hotez, Tom Keen will ask you about yeast and creating the nitty gritty of the vaccine. And I'll ask you, when can we get back to normal? And the way that I'm wondering is I'm looking at how China is giving an unproven vaccine to thousands of individuals in that country. What is the potential consequence of doing this? And should we do it if the consequences aren't that bad? Well, the consequences of getting it wrong are substantial. I mean, if you wind up putting a vaccine out there that turns out not to be safe or doesn't work as well as you think, uh, thought that undermines vaccine confidence. And we've seen that happen before. We saw it happen last year in the Philippines, where there was a uh, loss of confidence uh, because of a, of a new vaccine that was introduced. And we wound up, and, and parents stopped, wound up, wound up stopped vaccinating their kids against measles. And they had a catastrophic measles epidemic that led to thousands of the deaths of kids. And so, you know, vaccines are a special type of pharmaceutical in that they're very, the ecosystem is very fragile and it doesn't take much to undermine confidence, even if it's a good vaccine, it could still get voted off the island. I mean, we've seen that happen with the GSK Lyme disease vaccine. It was a good vaccine, but because of public perception, it tanked, and that was true of one of the rotavirus uh, vaccines as well. So history is littered with good vaccines that are never used because of public perception. So that's really important. And meanwhile, as we wait, over the next three months, a lot of people are expecting a second and third wave of the virus. What's that going to look like? Yeah, I'm very worried about this fall, Lisa. We're um, starting to see an uptick now in the northern part of the Midwest, uh, in Wisconsin, in the Dakotas. And I'm wondering if this is the beginning of that big fall surge that everyone's <clears throat> predicting. And it has two consequences. One, uh, especially in the northern states where people are indoors a lot, I'm worried. And that will include co coming back potentially to New York and Boston and, and, of course, the UK. But also now there's some new data that came out over the summer saying that for reasons that we don't entirely 
understand the severity of the illness goes up in cold weather as well. So it's not just the numbers, it's the quality. Right. You remember back in New York in March and April how terrible it was. That may be more than just a learning curve and how to take care of patients. There might be something about the cold that's giving higher virus inoculum. Right. We don't really understand it, so that's something to look out for also. Dr. Hotez, I want you to address now on radio and television people that question whether they should be giving flu shots or pneumonia shots, bacteria, virus, whatever, to their kids, to their loved ones as well. Address the efficacy and safety of these common shots. Well, they're life-saving. Uh, remember that measles epidemic that we had, you had in New York uh, last year in 2019? That landed 50 in the hospital, including 18 in the intensive care unit. I mean, we don't make vaccines for diseases lightly. We do it because they're serious pathogens and serious illnesses. Same with influenza, uh, which, you know, up until this, up until COVID-19 was typically one of the single largest killers of people around infectious diseases. So you want to take those illnesses off the table by getting them vaccinated. The problem is there's a very aggressive anti-vaccine movement out there uh, that uh, actually started in the UK, but it was amplified like only Americans can. And it was really uh, revved up in the United States and it's caused a lot of damage right now. Well, so and it's and it's hard to download anything but misinformation. So yep, you have to be got, careful. Got